Hi, I'm Dan Lakin of Bar Events UK. Usually we supply giant TPs, mobile bars and event staff. Happy World Gin Day, everybody. What a better day to release our brand new branding of Around the World in 80 Drinks. It is my promise to you to try and bring you live guests every week from a different place to basically bring you fantastic drinks and a bit of entertainment. We've been doing these masterclasses for a while now and I've managed to get some pretty awesome guests as well. So I thought, sod it, let's jump in at the deep end, let's make a thing of this, let's see how far we can take it. Around the world in 80 drinks. So, same as always, if you're watching live, tag someone who would like to see this show. If you're not watching live, hashtag around the world in 80 drinks. I nearly said the old hashtag then. If you're not watching live, hashtag around the world in 80 drinks, but also tag someone who you think would like to see this show. All the people that are tagged, everyone who's tagged someone, will be entered in our cocktail competition and you'll end up winning some free cocktails if you tag enough people. So, if you're watching live, tag someone. If you're not watching live, tag someone, but hashtag around the world in 80 drinks. You'll be, you'll be up for winning the competition. Right, so, Relating back to last week, the winner of last week is Tony Jones. Well done, he tagged loads of people. So, more chance in winning. Tony, we'll, we'll tag you in this if you're not watching now and, uh, and we'll get your address and we'll post some cocktails off to you. So, as I always say every week, tag someone. Let everyone know about this show. Help us help you. We want to give you free drinks and we want you to help us promote this show. Around the world in 80 drinks, the brand new show. Although the content's still very similar. Right, okay, so today we're making the Singapore Sling. We've got a guest on later, as always. Um, but let's, let's jump in at the deep end and let's start making a Singapore Sling. So you're gonna need the following ingredients and if you're making a long, I'll just turn my music down a bit once again. If you're making a long, you've probably already read the script, you've already read the ingredients lists. We're starting with gin, fantastic gin. The better the gin, the better the drink. We're using Harewood. We're using cherry brandy. Uh, cherry herring is the classic go-to, um, but I've, I've ordered something off Amazon, absolutely fine. Cointreau, orange liqueur, or if you've got triple sec, that's absolutely fine. Even if you've got Grand Marnier, despite the fact it's made of brandy, you know, we're gonna be fine because there's brandy in the cherry, cherry liqueur anyway, hopefully, if you're using the right one. We're using Dom Benedictine, which is essentially a herbal liqueur. We're using Grenadine. Um, this is the sort of stuff you get from the supermarket. If you're ordering it online, it's probably gonna be something like Monin in a glass bottle. We're using Angostura bitters. We've used that in previous weeks. I'm using Funkin lemon um, sour, basically. Um, if you've got whole lime, sorry, I said lemon, I mean lime. If you've got whole lime and fine, you're going to need to juice the whole of that to make the 25 mil. And finally, pineapple juice. Just any old pineapple juice that you've got. I'm using Morrison's own. I'm not going to brag about that, unless they start to pay me to brag about that. Right, okay, so let's start off with the way we have done every other week, pretty much. We're going to start off with a sweet and a sour base. So if you're using a whole lime, or if you're using lime as, as a fresh fruit, then put the whole lime in. So if you're not, and you're using this pre-batch stuff that I've got, then it's 25 mil. So, Funkin' Lime, 25 mil. There we go. I'll give you a bit of time to juice your hard lime, because I know some people are still mixing away at home. Despite the fact that these cocktails are getting quite complicated now, and when I say complicated, they all follow the same base. You know, the only complicated thing is remembering the ingredients, which if you're making long at home is not a problem because I'll tell you and you can rewind it. The complicated thing is the amount of ingredients. So it's, if you have to order more, if you have the stock in your spirits cabin, and that's the only, and actually, if you're gonna make it next week without me telling you how to do it, are you gonna remember it? But I, t I tell you what, actually, when I first remembered how to make a Singapore sling, I always used to confuse it with a Mai Tai. But then I followed the advice of my trainer, which incidentally was Nick Ord and, and Declan McGurk, who we've had on previous weeks. And that is, we've garnished the drinks with, with what's in the drink. So when I forget what the difference is between a Singapore sling and a Mai Tai as a novice bartender, I could think, what, is, what does each one look like? Okay, one's got head on, it's got pineapple. One's got this garnish, so that hasn't got pineapple. It's all about memory aids. 
So hopefully you've juiced the lime in, in the time I've been chatting about that. So to balance out the sour, we're gonna put in some sweets. Grenadine is just a sugar syrup. It's a pomegranate sugar syrup. So as all the other rules have previously gone, we're putting one shot of lime in, or one shot of sour, to half a shot of sweets. So one shot of lime to half a shot of grenadine. That's the base of our cocktail, fine, done. Next bit, let's stick some booze in, the best bit. I'm using Harewood Gin, the better the gin you got, the better the drink. And this is a fantastic drink. I would drink this straight if it was put in the freezer. I'd stick it in my martini glass and drink it. One shot. So now we're left with one shot to complete within liqueurs, following the two shot rule that I, I've suggested in the previous weeks. So, cherry brandy. This is the next sort of most, most powerful flavor in the drink. Half a shot of that. Just put a bit more in. So, one shot of gin to half a shot of cherry brandy. Or cherry liqueur if you're struggling for cherry brandy. So now we're left with half a shot left to fill and we've got two more spirits to put in. So we're gonna split those um, ingredients into those two shots. So a quarter of a shot of my orange liqueur, which I'm using Cointreau, you might have triple sec. I notice someone doesn't have orange liqueur and they're using an orange gin, fantastic. In which case, stick a bit more gin in. And the last one's Benedictine, so that's gonna be the last quarter. You're gonna to struggle to measure a quarter in a shot glass. For information, your teaspoon or bar spoon is about five mil. So a quarter of a shot worked out into milliliters is about 12 and a half. So not to get too pedantic and too into this, it's two to three teaspoons. Either is fine. You're not gonna affect the drink that much. I'm gonna go two, that's 10 mil for me. Two teaspoons, two lots of five mil, 10 mil. So that's absolutely fine for me. I'm gonna do exactly the same with the Dom Benedictine. Two teaspoons, or two bar spoons. Two lots of five mil equals 10 mil. If I have got my maths wrong, because I am a numerically dyslexic, please, you know, fill me in on my, on my, on my comments. I'll tell you a bit about Don, Don Benedictine. It's one of the drinks that you leave have in your, in your spirits cabinet that will never get used, or you have never heard anything about it. Don Benedictine is basically a herbal liqueur. We've mentioned herbal liqueurs in the past with um, uh, Angostura bitters. So it's said to be inspired by Benedictine monks, hence the DOM, if you can see that on the label. DOM, Dio Optimo Maximo, to God, most good, most great. So that is the reference to the Benedictine monks. It's not actually made by Benedictine monks nowadays, obviously, but that's, what, that's, the, that's the inspiration of this liqueur. Um, the UK actually is a massive consumer of Benedictine, which is insane considering the only thing I've really put it in is in quarter shots in cocktails and only the Singapore Sling more often than not. So it's used a tiny amount in cocktail bars. The reason it's used so much in the UK is because of, believe it or not, a working men's club in Burnley. Shout out to Burnley. Woo no, no one there. Okay, so the reason it's massive in Burnley is that the soldiers of uh, Lancashire Reg East Lancashire Regiment went over to the war in France, started drinking this stuff. It was a bit, it warmed their hearts, it warmed their stomachs. And when they came back, they wanted to, they wanted to carry on that. They wanted to carry on that life, that, well, not, maybe not that life, but that drink anyway. Certainly carry on the memories maybe that they had with their friends. And Benedictine would have been around back in that day anyway. It was, it was made hundreds of years ago. So they just started drinking it. In fact, this, this old man's club has, has now started drinking it with, with Jägermeister instead of Jäger bombs. So this, this club, this tiny little, Old man's club, I say old man's club, worker man's club, sorry about that. <laughs> Everyone drinks there. Has, has been drinking this as, as Jaeger bombs. So they're getting through a thousand bottles a year, which is absolutely insane. The cocktail bars that I drink in and I've worked in will only get through one of these, maybe a year, maybe two a year, maybe three a year. If you're hot on Singapore slings, you'll get through a few more, but certainly not cases and certainly not a thousand. So, little reminder of what got in there. We've got sweet and sour, lime, we've got Grenadine. We've got our spirits in, which is the gin, a whole shot. The cherry brandy, which is half a shot. The Cointreau and the Benedictine, which is a quarter of a shot each. Give or take, about 10 mil, whatever. As long as it's in there, we're fine. We're gonna put some bitters in. 
This drink wants to be a complex drink, so let's add the complexicity. That's bitters, that's Benedictine. If you don't have the bitters or Benedictine, make this drink anyway. It's still going to be thereabouts a Singapore sling. This is another one of those classics that's changed over the years. The origin of it is, you know, slightly unclear. Um, while it was, it has been coined to, to raffles, the origin, the actual origin of this drink is slightly unclear. So you take any of the ingredients out and manipulate it a little bit and you're still going to have a Singapore sling. I dare say back in the day pineapple juice wasn't in it. We're going to put 50 mil in here. It's quite a lot of juice, considering some of the other shorter drinks we've made in the past. But it's a long drink essentially. A sling, if you ever come across a sling glass in a bar, it's usually thin at the bottom, a nice wide base, and comes out at the top. It's a tall glass, it's a long drink. The Singapore sling is a long drink. I need some ice. I'll be back in one sec. Classic home bartending, grab the ice out of the freezer. Right, okay, so assuming everyone's now got all the ingredients in there, we can add the ice, we can shake it as hard as you possibly can. In previous weeks when I've mentioned pineapple juice or coffee, the, the key in this drink is the hard, hard shake. Right, hard shake. So the Singapore Sling, undoubtedly, I say undoubtedly, like I say everything's got a question mark over it, originated in Singapore, created in the early century at the Long Bar and Raffles Hotel. Uh, luckily enough, I have actually been to the Raffles Bar, um, oh, sorry, Raffles Hotel, the Long Bar in, the, in Raffles Hotel. And, um, and the drink's fantastic, the bar is absolutely amazing, um, but the trouble with drinking a drink in its origin is that every time someone goes there they want that drink so they have an issue with that Profit, pro profitability if you go into a bar and just drink carling they're going to have an issue because they're not going to earn much money on the carling the, the 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 gps need to spread across all the products they sell if everyone goes to one place and orders one product they might have to make sure that their their gross profit on that one product is high um, so they have issues with the contents of the drink um, to make it, you know, profitable. And also the batch of it. They're, they're going to have to serve so many of them, they're going to have to pre-batch and pre-batch in massive vats, which means that the quality of the drink is undoubtedly going to drop. So you can go to Raffles Bar in Singapore, have, a, have an all right Singapore sling, or you can go to the bar over the road, which is going to brag about having a better Singapore sling than that place, which is what, incidentally, the bar over the road did. Stick it all in the glass, pour over fresh ice if you've got the ice spare. I'm going to put some more ice in there and garnish it. So, as I say every week, garnish it with what's in the drink. I'd love to garnish it with a pineapple um, or a pineapple leaf, but unfortunately there weren't any pineapple leaves on the floor this week, um, so I, I didn't get one. But what I have got is a cherry. Always put a cherry in. I'm just going to pop one in the top. Now I'm going to pop in a cherry in a drink or a couple, and a wedge of lime. There's lime in it. So, cut it into eighths, and hang a wedge on the side. If you've got fresh pineapple, do something similar with the pineapple, get some fruit on the side of it, get a leaf on the side, and there we have it, a Singapore sling. Absolutely amazing. Oh, it's been a long time since I've had one of these. I'm not even gonna pass this to my assistant. I'm just gonna put it in the uh, in the old cocktail cam there. Right, okay. So, anyone got any questions about that? I'm just gonna do some shout outs um, and you'll see why Merci coming up. All. Massive shout out Merci to Claire Kettlewell. Laura Lee, well done for turning up from Oregon again. Uh, Kirsty, Corey, Matt. Tom Rose, Julie, Richard Carr, Vicky, Tony Jones has joined, so he, he knows he's won the competition. Send us your address, Tony. Kaz, and more. Thanks a lot, so much for turning up. Right, okay, now the next part of our show. Okay, so going around the world means we're gonna struggle with time differences. 
Hence, we had to re record this next slot, um, basically on a Friday morning at 8 a.m. to fit in with the time difference in Korea. I produced this because I was on my own and didn't have the luxury of having Laura there. So I apologize if I look distracted or if it's not as good as when Laura directs it. So now let's introduce our next guest. He manages the award-winning Charles H. Bar in the five-star Four Seasons Hotel in Seoul, South Korea. Please welcome everybody and a massive cheer from me and Laura, Keith Motsi! Roll VT! Hello, Pleasure to be here. Hello, Dan. How's it going? Very well. Alive and well, surviving, you know. It's, it's uh, hanging on in there like all of us, but uh, things are a little bit better here in Seoul. It's, so, uh, it's, it's, first of all, it's really good to see you, and it's amazing to see you find an open bar. Fantastic. Yeah, you know, no, no, we are quite lucky and blessed here that we didn't have to close and we just sort of starting to see people coming back here now. You can never keep Koreans away from a bar. I'm pretty sure they'll be a revolt if you stop them from drinking. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we had a bit of a brief chat earlier. Tell us about how COVID has affected you guys over there and if you've had a lockdown and that sort of thing. Yeah, we didn't really have a lockdown. We kind of have some recommendations, government advice of what to do. A lot of the hotels sort of uh, industry, I think we're all kind of tanked pretty much everywhere, occupancy is down. But uh, bars and restaurants, because Koreans generally, they eat and drink out a lot with their friends and don't really cook at home, so it's pretty much nearly impossible to shut it down. So everything is open and is on the go here and now. We are all cylinders, go, go, go. God, that's absolutely amazing. And also something that the, the guests didn't see just before we came live is uh, one of your team disinfecting the whole bar. Yes, exactly. We do that twice just before we open the bar. We disinfect the place just to precautionary because we're at a hotel, but also temperature check and thermal check for when everyone walks into the hotel is mandatory. And usually I'll be wearing a mask which is somewhere, but uh, masks is meant, we wear masks as well when we're working. Yeah, so, uh, so I, you're saying there's no real lockdown, it's just government guidelines. You know, tell, tell us a bit more about that, because I think if the government in the UK just gave us guidelines and not direct instruction, most people would probably ignore it. Yes, I think there's a certain discipline here, because people wear masks pretty much. Anyway, we wear masks in public, so this was kind of natural of like, okay, wear masks, it's kind of, you have to do it, everyone wears masks. They won't let you in a taxi and in some places if you're not wearing a mask, so you kind of do it mandatory. And they advise you to do sort of social distancing, don't go out in groups of this many. It's kind of up to you, but generally here people kind of listen and they work together for the greater good not just for yourself. I think that's one of the reasons why it's sort of like it didn't spread too badly here is because there's a discipline and people would rather just get it over and done with than sort of prolong, prolong, prolong. So do you have tourists coming into the country at the moment? At the moment, if you do, if they do come at the moment, they kind of locked it. I think it's special people, sort of like government officials, but if people do come in, it's a 14-day quarantine. And from what I hear, it's a very slick way they actually keep... If you go out 10 meters from where you are supposed to be in quarantining, there's an app that actually starts ringing and I let on your phone. Oh, wow. So you do 14 days and they actually... But also it's the same as like the drive through testing here. It's easy to get tested. If I want to get a test, I can literally go in a drive through get tested and have some results probably between 7 to 24 hours. Wow, that's that's really good. So that's you, available to everyone. So you were saying um, also when we chatted earlier about the social distancing thing when when the government recommended that people just um, just decided not to go out to bars and restaurants but they were all still open. <laughs> Yes, so what they're doing here is like we get an alert on our phone pretty much maybe twice, three times a day. 
the way they do it is like they will text where the areas where they've been COVID. So, for example, if Headingley, there's been some cases, people will just not go to eat and drink in Headingley. You go to eat and drink in Chapalaton. Right. Yes. Chapalaton has some cases and it's escalating. People will just advise if you were there, quarantine yourself, or and you don't go to eat there. You go to eat in maybe Harrogate or you go to eat in Otley. So it's kind of, you just get an alert of places, I go here, I go here, I don't go here, this case is there. Or I was clubbing on Co Lane last week, there was a massive case, I quarantined for 14 days, and the government to know everyone who was in that area. Well, in fact, when, when we originally chatted about um, you coming on to do this, um, I said, you know, what's COVID like down there? Is it locked down? I didn't know anything about it. And you mentioned, was there a clubber? That went out with it and so then an area became locked down is that true or, or at least um where's this one did you mention a clubber someone went out clubbing with covid and uh and spread the case so did that did an area have to pretty much shut down then yes there's a big area called e21 and it's where all the clubs are it's a bit like Paul lane but a little bit bigger so one of the clubbers uh tested positive four days after but they managed to track probably over like uh, 15,000 people because people have to leave their details when you go out. Wow. So they tracked them, but what they did was like, it's voluntarily, you just go get checked. It's still confidential. You like, they just tell you the places around the city of where to go get checked for the test yourself and you quarantine yourself. And Gosh. people did, they managed to pretty much uh, trace like 90% of the attendees. God, that's incredible. It sounds like they've got really good systems. Like 15,000 clubbers. God. Yeah, it does sound like they've got really good systems over there and it's obviously working. Look, uh, Keith, tell us tell us about the drink that you're making for us and uh, and fire away. Yes, so today I'm going to make like a limoni cocktail. It's a beautiful drink from a friend of mine in uh, Four Seasons in Miami. It's a recipe they gave us for one of our pages. It's a, a beautiful aperitivo style of drink which is a combination of like a tequila, a coconut campari, a lemon sherbet, and a bit of vermouth all mixed together. Just very refreshing and just like a very little bit bitter. It's just a delicious drink. We pair it up with a little prairie oyster, which is like egg yolk, a little bit of Worcester, some vinegar, some lemon, and some spices. So I'm going to make it for you at home here. So for the coconut campari, it's just use a, a little bit of a fat wash for your campari. It's a 24 hours. So for me here, I've already mixed kind of the tequila, the campari and the vermouth. So just uh, we make it, we mix it all together. So it's a quick service for when we make drinks. For those who want to know, just get a, for a fat wash, there's no right or wrong. You can measure it depending on what sort of flavors you want. But it's just kind of coconut and a little bit of Campari, which you leave overnight in the freezer until fat, then it dries, then you kind of fine strain it. The lemon sherbet, which takes a while to do, is a combination of like a sugar, Lemon peels, like lemon essence, and a lot of maceration. Beautiful. That's pretty much it in terms of like. Ulala. And for my glass, it's got to have a little bit of like lemon paint. So I like to work a lot with a lot of scents and a lot of different flavors. The lemon paint is just like a, a bergamot which is like italicus and a little bit of agar. We just paint it in a bit of sugar. So it's a little bit sweet here. The drink itself is a little bit bitter. Can I just get a bit of ice? Pour this. Thank you. So the way you do it, we just have a little bit of herbs here because it's based around sort of Italian stuff. The paint here is a little bit sweet. So when you are drinking Koreans, Bitter, comparing flavors are a little bit new. 
So the way you do it is when you drink from this side, it's a little bit much sweeter than when you just drink it. Those who like bitter flavors, like me, you just drink from here. If you want the drink to be a little bit sweet, you'll be here uh, too. Uh, you drink it kind of from here. And then we just got to do a kind of your favorite oyster. Which is just, uh, this is kind of a seaweed, egg yolk, a little bit of pepper here, salt, just a little bit of cayenne on top. A little bit of lemon here. Lemon juice, oh, I'm sorry. A little bit of Tabasco here. And some Worcester sauce here. Beautiful. Give it a nice quick shake. That's your money shot right there. <laughs> Double strain. Voila. Wow. That is your drink, Claire. Limonic cocktail. That looks absolutely amazing. It's quite a, yeah. it sounds like quite a complex drink, but seeing you run it through like that, you know, it makes you realize things are possible to do at home, but just a little more time consuming. Exactly. Like uh, everything in here, the Campari, the sweet vermouth, the tequila, you already have. And they're just the coconut, sort of like a coconut oil or any coconut, anything fatty you can infuse with. You, you can easily find in the shop. Egg yolk, Worcester, Tabasco, salt. Again, it's everything that's just easy. You can find it. And then the paint, again, if you have some leftover for the sherbet, some leftover lemon peels, some lemons, essence and everything. It's everything you have lying around your house that you might never use yeah. together yeah, yeah, but yeah, a absolutely. nice aperitivo style of drink here <clears throat> amazing well done good work i'd love to drink that but um but maybe not anytime soon with it being you you in south korea i tell you what i also love how's that <laughs> I, t I, tell you what, I tell you what i also love is the fact that you've got staff milling around you and it is it is a real open um hotel you, we're used to someone's kids wandering into the dining room disrupting the live feed not uh not members of staff <laughs> adam come say hello <laughs> we introduce you to one of our superstars no this side I'm no this side cozy. yeah stand say hello hi <laughs> nice to meet you <laughs> she's oh, wearing without, without, without the mask yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wear the red jacket. You know, everyone always wonders why I have the red jacket. Right, huh? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nearly. <laughs> yeah. Come to me. Yeah. So, uh, so something um, everyone doesn't really know about is uh, your bar's been voted uh, one of the world's best bars, top 100, hasn't it? Yes. I think uh, Korea in general, it's, uh, we're quite humbled and honored really to be amongst such establishments. We are a relatively small market compared to a lot of other big cities, but I believe in the next few years, the Korean market will be the one to keep an eye on. There's some incredibly talented bartenders and craftsmen over here, and I'm just glad to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's absolutely incredible. Me and Keith used to work together in Leeds, which is why he's been re referring to Leeds throughout the conversation. Oh. And 
George. <laughs> and, uh, and now he's all the way on the other side of the planet, which is why I might hasten to add that I'm doing this at seven in the morning. And uh, what time is it over there? Is it four o'clock, 4 p.m.? Yes, it's four o'clock here. Yeah. yeah, in fact, it's eight in the morning here now. Yeah, so um, you, you're also voted the best bar in, in uh, is it South Korea? Yes, in Korea, yes. Yeah, amazing. Two years in a row amazing. now, again, it's a, it's a, the, the team here is fantastic, you know, it's just, I'm happy to be involved. Yeah, some of the best I've worked with, so it's it's incredible, like, recognition for them, you know. Yeah. Smaller markets, we don't really get a lot of the recognition we deserve, but i say for your next trip, you need to come see Korea. Everything is done to incredible standard. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess it's a part of the world that we don't really hear much about over here. But I know tourism's on massively on the up over there. Um, but I, I do. It's quite expensive, isn't it, for Brits to eat and drink out? Ah, uh, I think depending if you drink like the local and eat like the local. I mean, soju is two dollar per bottle, so you you could get lit. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on what you're drinking, you, you could get absolutely lit if you drink with a lot of <laughs> Which is part of the fun here, you know, with soju for like 10 pounds, you get five bottles of soju. Wow. And then on the flip side, when you're using imported spirits and things, how much is that drink, for example, in, in dollars? Uh, drinks, cocktails, I think the average coming in is like 21 quid. Wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's an expensive hobby. <laughs> and wine as well, wine imported spirit size, pretty expensive. But they have some nice local beers you can have as well, which is pretty reasonably priced. Wow, okay. Yeah. Absolutely incredible, just a completely different world over there. But I, I think having spoken to you and learned a bit more about it, it's definitely on the bucket list. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, let us know, man. We look forward to hosting anyone. And anyone watching, like I'm sure you can get my contact to my handle, just keep in touch. They would love to host you here. What we'll do is we'll tag you in in, in all the comments afterwards um, so they can follow the, the Charles H. Bar and, and you, etc. on Facebook and Insta. But Keith, I just want to thank you so much for coming on with us. Everybody, it's been Keith Motsey. Thank you very much, everyone. Just to let you know, guys, it's all going to get better over here. We're seeing signs of life here as well. People are coming out and they're having fun. Meanwhile, I'm going to go drink some soju. <laughs> Ciao. Come some it I hope you enjoyed that playback as much as I did. We'll post the links to Keith and Charles H. Bar and the Four Seasons Hotel in the comments. We'll confirm our next guest and drinks on Monday. Don't forget, if you're watching live, tag someone who would love to see this and tell them why to be entered into our competition. If you're watching on playback, please hashtag Cocktails, oh, what's, what's, the, what's the name of it? I forgot what the name of it is. Around the world in 80 drinks. Don't forget about the old hashtag. It's hashtag around the world in 80 drinks. Hash, and then also tag someone in it. Let them know why they should be watching it. And then you'll be entered in the competition to win more drinks. Thanks. I'm Dan Lakin and I am done.